Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Medspiration. If you're a college or post-grad student, the desire to stimulate yourself in order to perform at your highest level through caffeine or other harder substances may seem intriguing. In fact, college students have anonymously compared methylphenidates such as Ritalin and Concerta and amphetamines like Adderall and Vyvanse to performance enhancing drugs in athletes, claiming that they can work as a sort of cognitive steroid that enhances mental focus in order for students to be able to cram. Doctors who were published in the United States National Library of Medicine actually tracked Adderall mentions from November 2011 to May 2012, a period of about six months. Tweets were examined for mentions of side effects and study. Data showed that over 200,000 tweets from about 133,000 unique Twitter accounts mentioned Adderall. The number of Adderall tweets peaked during traditional college and university final exam periods. Rates of Adderall tweeters were highest among some of the most competitive programs in the United States, highlighting many Ivy League schools, which arguably host the fiercest academic environments. That's why in today's episode, we decided to explore how chronic Adderall and Ritalin use can affect our long-term physiology and overall health. Enjoy. Over 25 million people worldwide use amphetamine, which is the active ingredient in Adderall. In 2007, there were 5.6 million monthly ADHD prescriptions for people aged 20 to 39. By 2012, that number had nearly tripled, with adult rates rising faster than children. Sales for ADHD drugs like Adderall and Concerta topped 9 billion in the United States last year, a more than 500% jump from the last decade. So what's causing this craze? Adderall and Ritalin are classified as Schedule II drugs by the DEA. Other drugs that are in the same classification schedule are cocaine, Vicodin, methamphetamine, and Oxycontin. Stimulants affect the body in very specific ways. They can make you happy, depress your appetite, reduce fatigue, increase your attention span, and are used to treat narcolepsy, depression, and ADHD. They stimulate the release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and other neurotransmitters, which aids individuals to increase their focus and attention spans. For example, nerve cells and neurotransmitters in the brain act like they're at a middle school dance. Neurotransmitters like dopamine are on one side, while the receptors sit on the other side. Amphetamines start the party by pushing dopamine out onto the dance floor, where they then partner up with these receptors. Amphetamine also leaves dopamine on the dance floor, allowing for maximal binding of these receptors. This causes a surge of dopamine from the brain. During this time, the human autonomic nervous system functions in an excitable fight or flight state, also called the sympathetic tone. This causes a rise in heart rate and blood pressure. The brain, specifically the hypothalamus, synthesizes more stress hormones derived from corticotropin releasing hormone, which releases ACTH and tells the adrenal glands to synthesize more cortisol and also indirectly causing a surge of catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine. These physiologic changes can mimic a state that makes us as alert as someone who may be running from a 200 pound lion. As this surge of adrenaline enters our system, it causes the pupils to dilate which allows us to see at further distances, decreases salivary gland secretions, and turns off our digestive system, all while ramping up the heart rate and constricting our blood vessels. Through these changes, the body increases its attention span, stamina, and endurance by increasing blood flow to the brain and muscles. These physiologic changes help to explain why patients who experiment with stimulants experience the effects that they do. This phenomenon inhibits the anabolic processes of the body, which include the release of growth hormones, protein synthesis, muscle growth, and insulin release. A 10 milligram extended release Adderall can keep the body in this state for nearly 12 hours. This means the stress response, which was originally designed to be adaptive and protective in the presence of a threat, stays active for days on end rather than providing a short-term boost. This prolonged state of arousal, which impairs the release of growth hormone and androgen synthesis, can
can help to explain why doctors must monitor a child's growth rate, height and weight, heart rate and blood pressure if he or she has just begun taking ADHD medications. Basically, the raw materials that our adrenal gland uses to synthesize cortisol and adrenaline is also the same raw material we use to synthesize our androgens, such as testosterone, which may cause a net drop in testosterone levels and overall growth in children. So like most things in life, it seems as though Adderall and Ritalin can do both, some good and some bad to the body. If you're a college student or have experimented with stimulants in the past, what are your opinions on the uses and the misuses of prescription stimulants? Be sure to comment below and let us know. For more on the side effects of Adderall, be sure to check out the description below where you can find a case report in the National Library of Medicine on a patient who had developed testicular failure, possibly being associated with 17 years of Ritalin use. That's it for today, folks. If you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and become a part of the healthiest family on YouTube. Thank you guys. I really appreciate the time as always. I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. What's up guys? So I made this video because a bunch of you guys were asking me to make it. So if there's a concept or a drug that you guys want me to profile next, be sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. 